Greetings everyone, my name is Etterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Maker. During the last part, I covered 5 levels that I found on the Mega Maker Official Forms level sharing subform. So in this part, as promised, it's time to cover 6 viewer submitted levels, starting out with this one. Crystal Code by Mercurius, 136 plays and a score of 31. Let's see what this level has to offer. From what I've heard, this is Mercurius's highest rated level. I'm really excited to see what this level has to offer. As usual, if you want one of your levels to be featured in a part like this one, please leave the level name, or preferably the level ID, in a comment below or direct message me on Twitter. Alright, we have a whole bunch of special weapons including the perfect freeze, good. I'm quite interested to see... Ah, the music sounds a little bit different than what I expected it to be. Must be a new one. Yeah, this sounds like a slight, it sounds like a remix version of the uh, Fortress team from uh, the Wally Fortress team from Mega Man 5. Yeah, it's definitely a remix version of it. So I suppose there's a new one added and version 1.0.9. As I was saying though, I'm really proud to see how much Delta Ray, aka Mercurius, has gone so far. Starting out with the first level that I played, which is Top of the Volcano, and now we're at Crystal Cove. I'm really happy to see how much they've improved over time. Many bravos to them. That was my fault for forgetting there were spikes over there. It's not too bad, though. Let's do this again, shall we? Really liking digging the music. So gotta be a little bit careful here so I don't just hit the spikes. Or I can just do that just for safety. Let's see, is there any... Good, we have charge kick. I should have used that before. And, of course, we see the new enemies being used, too. Hmm, I see a count bomb with six at the bottom. I wonder if that means the tower or the climb is about six screens long. Let's take a look. Okay, so far so good. Gimmicks and enemies are being introduced in a fair fashion. Although it's a little bit more challenging, so I suppose this is supposed to be more like a fortress-based level. Also, we have alternate pathways where, if we're skilled enough, we can take the upper route, and by doing so, we get an E-Tank. Good to know that the, we're rewarded for being more skillful. Good checkpoint placement as well. I should be using my special weapons more, though. I still wonder- whoa, I didn't see those spikes for, uh, for a while there. That was my fault, though. At least we got the charge kick in order to make these challenges easier, so I do approve of that. I wonder what the count bombs mean, though. I suppose they mean something in relation to the difficulty. At least that's what I think. Hmm, 619 or 169? Oh, I was supposed to pay attention to the teleporters, or at least the count bombs in which order they came by. I remember seeing 6 to 9, so I guess we need to take the right teleporter. No, it was the wrong teleporter, unfortunately. So if we took the right teleporter, we will be taken to uh, the next part of the stage. So it was it was 619. I guess I missed the count bombs somewhere. Oh yeah, there was the one over here. That was my, my, my complete blunder. I thought there was a 6 and 9, but I completely missed the one over here. And that was me failing to make the jump properly. Of course, there was a checkpoint right over here, so I, there was no point of actually just going to the early segment. I could have just restarted, or reset at the last checkpoint. Well, at least it's an intention check, and I do know what it's used for now. Uh, that was my fault. I panicked a bit there because I don't want to embed myself on the ceiling spikes. And about the perfect freeze, we will be seeing a level later on in this part, which does make good use of the perfect freeze. I just wanted the damage boost there just to be safe. I didn't want to take another chance with charge kick failing. So it's 619 instead. 
Okay, and there was a check one placement there. Good. Very good check one placement. From what I've seen so far, this is definitely befitting of a stage that got over 30 score. Definitely deserves it. Okay, first one is tree. I get the feeling there will be a spike drop down here. Nope, there wasn't. Okay, tree seven. A lot of spikes here, but it's it's not too bad though. They are always introduced in fair fashions, and the enemy challenges aren't that punishing. In fact, if this was a less lesser design level, instead of the bottom left over there, we would, there would just be a bottomless pit. But instead, there's actually a block over there that won't kill us. We have some time to jump up. And the croaker can't hit us from the left side as long as we're on this ladder, so there's no worry of us getting knocked off. That I also do approve of. And I do like that most of the uh, stage teams are on crystals. That being the tile set, the waters, etc. Even the enemies, too. Do, I do approve of the aesthetic being followed. Okay, it was 734, I think. I think I already forgot what it was supposed to be. Uh, I won't take a chance, I'll just go up. After all, I do have the charge kick so I can circumvent it. I think it was 734. Was that right? Oh no, that was the wrong pat. Oops. It was the other one. Good thing that I have a teleportation point right over here. It really may it really decreases the, the challenge earlier though. Because if I got teleported um uh, if there wasn't a checkpoint here, then not being able to go back or being teleported before there, that would be more of a pain. But because we have a checkpoint here, it, it becomes a lot easier. Because now we can... Oh no. Okay, so that's how you get the M-Tank. But because there's a checkpoint right over here, and I suppose there will be a checkpoint right after the next challenge... Challenge? There's less of a concern of having to just restart the next checkpoint. It really diminishes the the penalty for failing this memor memorizing challenge. Let's see, perfect freeze, just to be sure. And I guess that was the end of the stage. It was certainly more of the, along the lines of a traditional Mega Man level in terms of length, maybe a little bit longer. But it was fun, the gimmick was well realized, the crystal team was maintained, well crystal slash mechanical team, with a set of enemies, gimmicks reintroduced in a fair enough fashion. And I did like the secondary gimmick of having to memorize the count bomb, count bomb numbers. Although the challenge was kind of mitigated by the fact that there was a checkpoint in between, uh, in between where the challenge was, or where you have to apply your knowledge of remembering what the count bombs were, and where you're teleported to when you fail it. So there's that. Of course I'll also restart at the last checkpoint because I know I will fail against the boss. So let's do it correctly this time. Still, I'll definitely give this stage a thumbs up. Good work, Mercurius. Completely immune against that. Okay, weak against the Surf Snake. Good to know. And that was the end of Crystal Code. I already gave my thoughts and opinions on the level so far, and overall I enjoy it. It definitely deserves the 30 plus ratings it got. And I will definitely add to it. Good work, Mercurius. You've definitely improved over the months you've been playing and working on Mega Maker levels. I'm proud of you. Now, on a different tangent, it's time to play the second level. Most random level in Mega Man history, 2017 edition, XD, and lag. By Mega Man 2407, 6 plays and a score of negative 2. Whereas that level was more of a fortress based level, it's time to go back to another random level. In fact, it was a remake of the original random level I played with Mega Man 2407. So, expect a lot of deaths, and I will have to take a look at it at the level editor. There is going to be a lot of secrets I'm going to miss. And that's me not paying attention. I got confused with the background, I was paying attention more in the lower part. 
And just like the description says, it's extremely laggy. That's not my computer lagging, it's the game lagging. It's not the recorder either, so... This is gonna be quite a level. Um... Let me see. Kind of hard to control. Let's see what's up here. Let's see, do we have a end? There's a checkpoint there. Mm, it's not really worth it to take, though. Instead, I'll just take all these m &E tanks, just for the sake of it. And there's a mix of Kaizo elements, too. The music starts over here, then it just lags out when all the enemies appear. Again, I forgot there were spikes up there. I keep getting distracted by all the elements at the bottom. If I don't pause the game over here, the music just refuses to play. That's interesting. Come on. Oh, the door's fake. No wonder. There's a secret. I see six. And the stage is extremely laggy. So, I don't know what else to say about the stage other than the fact it's extremely laggy and it takes a while to get through. And elements are randomly scattered throughout the stage. Yeah, and this stage is better explored using the level editor. I'll try about half a dozen more times to get to the end, at the very least. If I can't reach it, I'll go immediately to the level editor. Oh, the music played this time, even though I didn't actually access the level editor. I, I mean, even though I didn't... Even though I didn't pause the game. Strange. I guess it's engine specifics. Oh, goodness gracious. The lag is extremely intense here. Ugh. I didn't realize I was standing in the water there. Really, I would be complaining about this a lot more if this was a regular Mega Man level, or more of a challenge level, but this is so random that I don't know what to complain about, and that's it. Now, if I could only get the charge kick, that would make the stage so much easier. Oh, I do have it, never mind. I need to kill off this Ben K. Easier said than done, though. I'm going to consume an E-Tank, just to be sure. There's just so much enemy spam here and random elements, that's kind of hard to tell where everything is. Not to mention because of all the stuff that's packed in this level, I'm not even sure where the ending point of the level is. There's just so many enemies, gimmicks, and items crammed into this one level that the engine's lagging and I don't know where the end point will be. If there is an end... Well, there is definitely an end point because the designer had to complete the stage in order to upload it. The question is finding where that end is. Well, I'm dead. Yeah, I probably stepped on the ceiling spikes from the top. Well, I'll give this four more attempts, then I'll end it, and I'll just jump over to the editor. I'm not even sure if this level is bus is doable buster only. Then again, the buster is temporary, so I guess it isn't. Ah, uh, whoa. I thought I was gonna die over there. Darn, I really need that extra, uh, weapon energy. Let's see if I can actually get to the next part of the stage now. Preferably without dying, I want to at least get to that checkpoint and see what the rest of the stage has to offer. Okay, got over there. Let's see if there's anything to the right. I guess I have to go down. Oh, there is something to the right. 
Osc a little off-screen ladder over there. Um, let's see, Charge Kick will probably be the thing I need. Hmm, I see what they want me to do here. Um, hmm. I don't know if I can actually get, to the, get through this room. Without damage boosting, that is. Come on, damage boost me. Yeah, that count bomb's gonna block my path, so I don't think I can get across this room. Oh, wait a minute. I missed that out completely. I thought. And. Okay, there are party balls everywhere. I thought that this was a blocked pathway, but no. Now, if there's only a way I can shoot there. Never mind, I can. That's the end of the stage. Well, there is more to explore about the stage, but... Um, I think I'll just view it in the level editor. There is no way I'll be able to do it by myself by playing through the level. If I do, it'll probably take one or two parts in order to do it. Okay, we're in the level editor now. Let's see what this level has to offer, or rather its secrets. Let's do, go by starting at the left. I'm gonna start from the top left and see what the level has to offer that way. Because this level goes on and on. Undertale, reference to that game. Now, if there's only a way you can open up a mini-map for these levels, especially larger ones, that way you can get a bit broader picture of what secrets the developer put. W-H-I-I-A? Wonder what that spells. Wea? There are probably a lot of easter eggs that, well, you can only access by using the level editor, of course. Not to mention a whole bunch of secret exits. But of course it gets really confusing where you're at without a mini-map. Unfortunately. And there are a whole bunch of exit points in this stage. I'll probably miss some even in, even in the level editor. Lol. That's why I would love to have a mini-map, especially for stages like this one. And another stage in particular, which I may cover in a future part. Well, this room looks like a mess with all of the top spins, or spinning platforms. Crash versus Mario. Sonic. At least they got the color right. At least the level editor doesn't lag like what happened when I played through the stage. Sorry if I'm going through this, uh, tumming through this uh, so quickly. If you want to get the best effect of this level, it's best if you play it by yourself. That way you can get the full extent of how random it is, and how many different features, enemies, items, gimmicks the level designer crammed into this one. Now, I didn't give this stage a thumbs up because it isn't really my cup of tea, and well, it fits the definition of random, and well, it'll probably appeal to certain other players, but for this one, for me at least, it doesn't. But I do like looking through all of the easter eggs in the level editor. Found... me. Yeah, I found you in the level editor. I'm not even sure how you're supposed to access this. Because the ladder doesn't take you upwards. Well, I guess that's the the extent of this level. Wait, never mind, there's all these water textures or water backgrounds. Nothing there, though. Once again, I would like to see a mini-map because there's a whole bunch of gaps in between each of the rooms. There's one thing I would like to check out, though. If I can find where the beginning of the stage was. Okay, there I am. I want to go all the way to the right. We already saw all these rooms, I suppose. And all the party balls. 
I want to go over here and see what how, how do you exit the stage on the right. And of course we have a boss fight against Crash uh, Metal Man. So now we have to rush to, towards the right and we end the stage. Or get killed immediately there because being foolish. Because the Yoko blocks are placed that way. Hmm. I'm gonna try one more time, then I'll just end off this level. I got frozen in place there by Metal Man and I got knocked in the pit. Okay, I'll give it one more shot, then I'll end off this level. Oh, I forgot I took that much damage from the big eye. Okay, one more try. I want to try at least getting to the right for once. Okay, I got invulnerability frames set correctly. Teleport. Oh my goodness. Oh, I got it this time. I thought I was going to die by being telefragged by all those Yoko blocks. But apparently I survived somehow due to the engine glitching out. But as I said, it's a random level true and true, so... I guess it'll be more appealing to those who are more perceptive of that and like more random levels. So good work, Mega Man 2407, I guess. Third level on the lineup is Skill Test, The Lost Zomedius Castle. Hard. By Pirata Pateta. 15 plays and a score of 3. I remember playing their last skill test in the last Viewer Submit levels. Oh boy, that was certainly difficult near the end. And this is marked as hard, that one was marked as normal, I think. So let's see how difficult this will be. Charge Kick, Toss Spin, Windstorm, Surf Snake... We're gonna have to utilize all of them. Hmm, I think I know what they want me to do here. And that's me failing to do it. I need to position myself in just the right fashion so I can get across. And damage boost the other way. That way I can get knocked on the platform correctly. Let's see, what do I need to do next? I thought I needed to go downwards. Never mind, I need to use the charge kick and windstorm. Yep, it's that sort of challenge. Ah, oh, that was a close one. I thought I had to use the Windstorm there. Good checkpoint placement, thankfully. We don't need to repeat that challenge again. But we have this one now. Oh boy, this is gonna take a lot of attempts. I'm not even sure if I'll be able to complete this stage, personally speaking. I need to use the charge kick over here. I need to use the Windstorm in order to rocket myself upwards, then... Oh, or I can just put the Windstorms at the bottom and bounce off that way. Okay, I made it across at once. I, my strategy, initial strategy was a bit off. Now we have to worry about this one with all the Yoku blocks. Uh, we need to do a jump over there. Okay, got in the first attempt. Oh, I didn't realize there was going to be Yoko Locks over there. I could have died over there and had to repeat that segment. If the difficulty holds the same as it does here, I don't know if I'll be able to complete this stage. And don't doubt it, I will do a lot of jump cuts in the stage, especially with all the failed attempts, that's for sure. And I really want that M tank just to be safe. Okay, I made it this time. I think I circumvented the challenge. Basically, I used the Windstorm to bounce up there, damage boosted off one of those Octopus batteries, and walked on one, that last uh, spike on the right, and then charge kicked over to the left. That way I could circumvent the entire challenge and get by it much more easily. Thank goodness for that. That would be extremely annoying otherwise, that's for sure.
Let's restock into Windstorm Energy and see what new horrors lie beyond. Still, at least the challenges are well designed. And oh, thank goodness, this was a shorter stage. This was certainly a hard level, that's for sure. Let's see, what is his weakness gonna be? I, I think I have, a, I have a hunch what it is. If I can even get up to him. Wow, it rockets me up that far. At least there's a checkpoint here with generous weapon recharges, so I don't mind it too much. Okay, I need to use the... Okay, I see what I need to do here. At least that's what I think is weakness. Well, that's not probably not his weakness, but it works good enough for me. Just gotta be careful, and I do have an M tank. Sure, it's kind of cheesing the boss fight, but after the really difficult stage that preceded this, I'm willing to cheese it as much as possible and stand over here. Still, I think the stage was well designed, and the challenges it asked of the player, mainly ones utilizing a combination of charge kick and windstorm, were pretty decently designed, and they forced you, forced you to understand how to command the charge kick and windstorm properly. It wasn't as bad as some of the other Windstorm Challenge stages I went through, that's for sure. So I will give this stage a thumbs up, 6 or 7 out of 10, that's for sure. Though I only recommend it to players who know how to utilize the Windstorm in combination with the Charge Kick. I don't know why they gave us access to the Toss Spin, I don't think it was really, well, necessary. Oh, never mind, in that one challenge that I cheesed using a combination of the Windstorm and the Charge Kick, I had to use instead probably a combination of those aforementioned special weapons and the Toss Spin in order to bounce off of those Octopus batteries and then use the Charge Kick on the left in order to access the ladder. Never mind, that's how you're supposed to do it. Still, good work, Pirata Pateta. I thought it would take at least 10 or 15 more minutes real time, but thankfully it was much shorter than what I expected it. I expected the stage to go on for twice or three times as long. But thankfully it ended a bit earlier. Still, very good challenge level. Now on to the fourth level on the lineup. The Mega Machine Gun. Dead to Enemy Spam by Dr. Lumen. 13th place and a score of 2. Now this was on my list of levels to be randomly picked in the previous two parts. But it got moved over to this one to be a guaranteed one because the level designer asked me to do it. And I already know what the level is kind of about. This is one of the first- this is the first level I've played so far which allows me access to use a perfect freeze infinitely. And as I've been alluding to in the previous two parts, this is a great weapon for taking care of enemy spam, especially a lot of tellies. And this stage will show, showcase that really well. For one, we don't need to worry about its weapon use- uh, a special weapon usage now because we have infinite energy. Just spam it everywhere and we'll be able to get by very easily. And that way we can take care of the small toads very- we can basically just decimate all of the small toads, or small mini croakers. Although the mini croakers weren't that much of a problem anyway, in this game. I would have loved to have the perfect freeze in Mega Man Endless where I gained my hatred of croakers, due to the small croakers dealing a truckload of damage. And here's where the, the perfect freeze becomes extremely useful, against tellies and large amounts of tadpole eggs. This is going to be a lot more cartartic, and for that reason alone I'll give this stage a thumbs up. It feels so nice destroying all these enemies with ease. I would have loved to have this weapon, especially in the Gamble 2 as well. Especially with how enemy spammy some of the lower tier levels can be. Just look at all the power-ups I'm getting. I can basically keep, I can just tape the button down and deal with all these enemies with no problem whatsoever. And the stage isn't that difficult anyway. Most of the challenges are enemy spam challenges which are just decimated by just me holding down the button. I think that was spelled space using all the tellies, I'm not sure though. The only danger is of course getting knocked off- Never mind, it, said, it actually said spam with an exclamation point at the end. The only danger is either getting knocked into the pit by one of the stray enemies or getting knocked or somehow losing control when I pick up an energy pickup. But this is so cathartic to do. Really fun. This is definitely going in my top 10 stage list, or my one of my top 25 stages. I know why they put this here though, because if we're not careful, well, you can end up destroying the platforms they need to go on, which I did right over here. So instead I'll do it the more careful way and... Oops, yeah, the platforms don't actually respawn. That's not good. At least we have multiple shots in order to do it, and there is a back... There is a backup measure.
All I see what I need to do here. Oh darn, I almost made it. There we go. I thought I was gonna fall in the pit again. This is forcing me to be a little bit, a little bit, a little bit careful with me spamming my abilities. Because if I spam my, my perfect freeze a lot more, it'll make it a lot harder to get to the end there. And stuff like this can happen, because I get knocked around everywhere. And the Yoko blocks are not helping matter. And if I take this route, if you're lucky enough, I get access to all these items. Still, I gotta be careful so I can actually reach the items, though. Because if I don't create a stairwell properly, well, I won't be able to access them. Gotta be a little bit careful so I can create a staircase. And most of these uh, enemies deal only right. They only deal like paper cut wart, wart damage. They're not that dangerous. Their only real danger is knocking me into pits or spikes. But here, there are no. Sp there's neither of them. Thankfully, the pole eggs they despawn from this room. That I do approve of. Oh boy. I'm just gonna deal with these big eyes this way. Oh, it's so satisfying, especially because the perfect freeze pierces. Otherwise, that would that room would be one of the most painful rooms to go through. And I forgot that these do these do respawn. No fret, though. They're really easily dispatched again. And we're at the boss door. I wonder what boss we'll be facing, or rather, what boss arena we'll be at. There'll probably be a lot of t enemy spam. No? No telegenerators? I expected there to be an extreme number of telegenerators in this room, but no. Now we're just fighting Bomb Man himself, and the perfect freeze is, is his weakness. It didn't have to be his weakness either, because it's so easy to hit Bomb Man with the perfect freeze. So overall, I enjoyed the stage a lot. It was nice cathartic, but I would like to see a harder version of the stage taken further, where you have to be a lot more careful with using the perfect freeze, so you don't destroy the platforms beneath you. This was explored a bit in this stage, with the E and M tank, and some of the areas where you have to climb on those Yoku blocks, but I would like to see it taken further. Otherwise, great job, Dr. Lumen. Fifth level on the lineup is Snakes in the Bay by Omegata. 15 plays and a score of 3. I remember playing their last stage, which was another Snake Man team level, so let's see what this level has to offer. We start about at the same place, actually. Although I think we started out at the bottom in, during this last this stage. That was a little bit of an odd stage transition over there, and um... Uh... That was the engine glitching out. I strongly believe the level designer didn't think that would happen. Okay, the engine... There's a weird transition over there that can end up glitching out stuff. So I guess this is going to be like another retread of the previous stage, of the last time I covered a viewer submit level, or was it a... I wonder if this was actually a level from the Mega Maker official forms, I'll need to double check. Regardless, now we have the Rush Coil, but in addition to that we actually have the Magnet Missile now. So now we can actually attack Top Man with his weakness. So let's see what how this remake stacks up to the original version of the stage. After all, the previous the original version of the stage was a, a rather claustrophobic one. And this stage does maintain it, but I want to see what other secrets it holds, especially with the addition of the magnet missile in order to make the stage a bit easier. After all, we only have Mega Man 3 physics. And the magnet missile does fit because it was also present in Mega Man 3. And of course, we have the forced weapon usage of Rush Coil, just like in the previous stage. Previous iteration of this stage. So 
So far, so good. Good introduction of enemies and gimmicks. It feels like it'd be home at home in Mega Man 3. As a little bit more of a difficult level, maybe in a ROM hack, but it would fit as a traditional Mega Man level. Although with kind of forced rush coil usage, though. I was worried there that I was just gonna fall in the bottomless pit over there. I'm not sure how, how I feel about these green jump of these blind screen transition jumps, though. I would have preferred if I could actually see what the right side of the ground on the right side of the screen would be, or at least teach me earlier that the, there is ground on the right side of the screen. That would be nice. At least the Magnum Missile makes dealing with some of these enemies a lot easier, especially the beaks. Ah, uh, I can't make it without Rush Coil. At least there's a large life energy here to, in order to make up the differential. And unlike last time, I actually have an M-Tank. Well, I guess we're at the boss door. The original version of this stage was, in fact, a traditional Mega Man stage in terms of length. So it's befitting that this stage also follows it, the remake that is. And unlike that one, I actually have an M tank, and I think I actually have a uh, Top Man's weakness. And the bot. Oh, never mind, Toad Man. I I thought we we're gonna fight the Top Man here. At least fighting Toad Man in this room is a lot easier, especially because he doesn't fire tops at home in on you. And the boss arena is a lot more fair, personally speaking. So overall, I think I like Snakes in the Bay more than Two Snakes, One Mega Man, which was the original iteration of the stage, especially the boss fight because it feels less frustrating. Although I wouldn't mind fighting Top Man again as long as we have an M tank, or at the very least his weakness being like the Magnum Missile or something. So good work, Omegata. That was definitely an improvement of the original stage, although I would have preferred if there was less blind screen transition jumps. There were two or three of them over there. So, on to the sixth and final level of this part. Gear Man by Antiman, 19 plays and a score of 1. You may recall it's Antiman being the creator of Last Man. So, I really hope that this stage is a lot better because. I really didn't like playing to a Last Man stage, or the Last Man stage, it just felt too frustrating with all the usage of those Sparkman platforms. Let's hope and see that they learned some lessons from the original stage and made this one a bit better. I have high hopes that they did. No charge shot, unfortunately. Hopefully there aren't too many durable enemies like in the original level, where there were a lot of tackle fires. Right now, the most durable enemies so far have been the Super Ball Cannons or these Skeleton Joes. And of course, we only have the Mega Buster, so this will be more of a traditional Mega Man level. We have Mega Man Tree Physics too, and we have the Shadow Man team playing. So far, the enemy placement isn't too jerkish. It's relatively fine, and gimmicks are being introduced in a relatively fair fashion. That, as well as enemies. Um, okay then, the Super Ball Cannon spawned behind me for some reason, when in fact it wasn't there before. I'll chalk that up to engine glitches. So far, the, the level's been going rather serenely. In fact, I like the fact there's more life pickups too. The only thing I would have liked is a rush coil or a special weapon, but this is fine. Would have liked a checkpoint there too, but I guess it works. Now we're getting introduced to all the spikes too, which I do approve of. We're gradually introducing more difficult variation of challenges. Although I don't see a central gimmick just yet, it just feels like a plain traditional Mega Man level. Other than the enemies, of course. I guess these boss doors separate where each of these and 
There should have been a checkpoint just before this boss fight, though, in case you die. And we have a boss fight against the Metal Man. This was definitely a step up in terms of stage quality in comparison to Blast Man, which was a chore and frustrating to play. Whereas this one is pretty fun to play through. A little bit plain, but it's fun at least, it's not frustrating, and gimmicks are introduced in a relatively fair fashion too. That I do approve of. And at least we don't need to fight Metal Man with the conveyor belts, we just fight him in a steady round. And that was the end of Gear Man. As I said, it's definitely a step up from Blast Man, but it could use some work. It was a rather plain stage, but at least it was an average stage. It was at least decent to play through and it was fun. It wasn't frustrating at all like Blast Man. Sure, it was around the same length of a traditional Mega Man level, but I feel like it could have been taken further. Like, put one more stage hazard where you need to jump up between spikes. But otherwise, I like the stage. I would like to see Antiman take it further with some of their future levels, going further with gimmicks, and fairly introducing new enemies, challenges, etc. So I hope you take these suggestions, it's Antiman, and improve your future levels. I would gladly like to see how great your future levels will be. I already know people like Delta Ray and Mercurius have improved over time, so I'd love to see how you improve too. So overall, throughout this part, I would say my favorite level was definitely Crystal Code by Mercurius. It definitely deserves a 30 plus rating. It was well designed, had a consistent aesthetic and enemy usage, and the gimmick with all the count bomb memorization was pretty fun. I wouldn't mind the stage being a bit longer with one or two more sections, where you had to instead memorize five count bombs, or five count bomb numbers, and you had more choices or wrong choices to pick through, but still it was fun. And an honorable mention goes to the Mega Machine Gun Death to Enemy Spam. Primarily for being so cathartic and being able to kill all of those tellies, tadpole eggs, basically all the enemies or the majority of the enemies which are commonly used in enemy spam. It was so fun to just cut them down using the perfect freeze weapon. So good work Dr. Lumen and the Mercurius. In the next part, I'll probably be covering a few levels that I'll find in the Mega Maker official subreddit. Well then, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Toodles!